Larry Dunford. We're getting ready to go Larry here Dunford. from Queensboro Community College. It is basketball tonight on QPTV as the Tigers of Queensboro Community College take on the Panthers of Borough of Manhattan College. I'm Joe Massey along with Sean Couch. Sean, this is going to be a very tough game for Queensboro. They're facing a, a team uh, that is very difficult to bag this year. They uh, have not been beaten in the CUNY, and I understand they're number five in Region 15. They are fifth ranked. Well, they're, they're doing quite well, according to the coach. Actually, they're three and one in the CUNY, Joe, so they have one loss. But they, uh, they have a tremendous player in Tony Vales. He's uh, been played a week three times already. And he's been a handful for Division Three on this level. And as we get into play, Queensboro hands the ball here. Tony Bales uh, did a big job on uh, Queensboro on their trip down there to BMCC. And we'll talk more about him as Queensboro works the ball around the perimeter and it goes in and out of the hands of Jarek Bow. Jarek Bow starting in the backcourt with Pete Samolis for Larry Danzler's Queensboro Tigers will set up their front line in a moment. As Borough Manhattan has the possession again and they throw it into the corner and a jump shot from the corner will not go from Josh to Azan. Tried a three pointer so we stay scoreless. Front line will have Dennis Kinslow for Queensboro. He's in the middle with Leo Asonye. They dump it along the baseline. Here's Samolis going along the baseline. Can't hit the driving shot. Queensboro tries to keep it alive and they can't do it. And BMCC really can get up the court. There was Tony Vales. We talked about him, but he couldn't lay it in. And the other way comes Samolis, and Samolis gets fouled. Peter Samolis, one of the Queensboro players with experience back. Kinslow Asonye on the front line and Tremaine Gooden to go with Pete Samolis and Jared Bow in the starting lineup for Queensboro. And this is number 15, Pete Samolis to the line. Samolis averaging 9.6, second leading score on the Queensboro team. Tough and hard nosed player. Joe. Second season here, he banks in that free throw. <laughs> Francis Lewis uh, High School, good basketball out there. and You know you know what you get with Pete. He's going to come out and just leave his whole body on the floor. And that's what they need, to be honest with you. They need somebody who's going to give it his all. And it's two to nothing. He didn't play very much in the first meeting they had with Manhattan. Jumper from the left side, no good down the other way. As Borough Manhattan got it back the other way, but they can't convert on the outside jumper. That was Sherrod Drummond who took it. And it stays 2-0, and Queensboro tries to work it out, and Drummond gets to that loose ball, and he'll take it all the way and lay it in. That was Sherrod Drummond getting a basket, not the way he planned to get it from outside, but he got to the loose ball. Yeah, these BMC, BMCC guards are really pressuring the ball. It looks like they don't believe in Queensboro's handles, and it's showing right here with these turnovers off the dribble. Aline was tough on the defense, forcing the turnover, and then a drive down by Vales, who got fouled. Tony Vales, we told you, 25 points a game. He's been player of the, not only player, but athlete of the week, I think, three times already. But about that program before the game. And talk to him about his coach Wendell Saunders over there who does a terrific job with that program and I said he's had very tough guards I said what did he teach you basically more than anything and he said you know what he said he taught me that there's more to life than just basketball and I, I kind of figured that about a guy like Wendell he is very big on teaching the young men, you know, how to approach certain situations in life. No doubt basketball is a game, but it's a, a game of life too. I mean, the way that you play, the way that you treat your teammates, the way that you talk to your coach and respond to his criticisms goes a long way in your life, you know, and as, as a player, an ex-player, 
I've had coaches who, you know, I didn't like what they had to say, Joe, but some you, of the things you, that they did gotta, say applied later. to my life and helped me later. They even used it later. Sure. Second free throw, no good, out of bounds. But it'll stay with Borough Manhattan as Queensboro knocked it out. Anyway, that's why it is Benjamin Batiker Academy. That's what the correct name is. And he's getting quite a quality of kid to go there. And now he comes into the CUNY and the Borough Manhattan program. And Dan Nigro, not an easy guy to play for either. He expects a lot out of his players. There's a drive down the left of the lane, and we have a little bit of a stutter step going to be called for traveling. Dan Nigro been in the game 17 years, Joe, uh, in the New York City scene around the area. Assistant coach at St. Francis. He's an excellent coach, and he knows how to recruit. Right now, Queensboro is uh, committing turnover, Sean, and again, Drummond goes to the basket and drops it in. Yeah, I don't think that BMCC has any fear of Queensboro's guards, and they are really pressuring them on the ball. Queensboro's going to have to decide if they're going to want to handle the ball or maybe try to do a little bit more passing and cutting. Here's Leo Asonye, a turnaround in the lane. He was very much off balance, and he missed it. And Jamel Cobb got that rebound for Borough Manhattan, and they get up and go, and right there, cut off in the lane was Tony Bales, and to the floor to pick it up when Asonia. Cobb got the rebound, got it up to his, uh, his uh, potent teammate. Both of them are very good, Bales and Cobb. All right, here is Queensboro working, and they're being rushed, as you can see. Samolas got along the baseline, had that block. Asonia got it back to... Leo Asonia and he got fouled. I hope I don't say Marcel because I'll be covering his brother in two weeks over at your college. Marcel Asonia. Leo got fouled right there. He'll go to the free throw line. In fact, the whole crew will be there for a Martin Luther King birthday doubleheader between York and John Jay. We're going to have that one there at York College. And I think you and I will be doing that game. Here's Asonia at the free throw line. First one off the front rim. Look at Asonia, Joe, and he's a big, smooth player, 6'6". Six, six. Nice hands, good feet, you know, good athleticism. You expect more from him. Only averaging uh, 7.6 a game and 5.8 yeah. rebounds. He showed so. some in drips and drabs, as they say, though. You know, he's coming along a little bit, and his brother over at York is a terrific player, and Leo drops in the second. So... Uh, if uh, Leo can follow him down that path, you'll have yourself a real good player here. There's a drive in the lane, and it's laid in. And Manhattan's gotten off to a 7-2 lead. That's Jamel Cobb right there. He also has a player of the week honor for BMCC. This is a very good team. 3-1, fifth in the region, 6-4 overall. Had a very tough schedule. And uh, Queensboro's hands are fully full tonight. I should say a 7-3 to three lead because they just put the other point up on the board, and I thought it was three, but they didn't flash it up there. And then Amandu Treor blocked that shot down here from an end. He's a guy with some size, and it caused uh, a turnover on Queensboro's part, so Manhattan will get the ball back with a 7-3 to three lead. That is a tough customer to deal with, that Treor in the lane. He's number 33. Addition around the perimeter. Now they go in the lane to cop for a little pull-up jumper. No good. Rebound is captured by Drummond. And he goes off glass. And Sherrod Drummond has six points. Six out of the nine BMCC points. And the Borough of Manhattan's ahead nine to three. Sherrod Drummond from Brooklyn Conservatory uh, High School. There's a drive all the way through and passing up the ball was good and missed by Kinslow, but Asonia picked it off inside and put it in. And it's nine to five. You know what they say in the schoolyard on that good pass. <laughs> They're looking to get it down low, Manhattan. Now they'll pitch it out. Here's a lean. He's from Grady High School. He missed that shot from the right of the key. Looked like he got banged a little bit. No call. Rebound inside put in by Vales, though. Well, you have to follow them all over the place because they have that terrific front line, 11 to 5. Bro, Manhattan physically is a little bit, seems like they're stronger than Queensboro. Their, their interior players have more bulk. Let's put it this them. way live bodies. 
Pass down low, one out of bounds. Well, no, you know what? Their bodies are pretty live, Joe, but they're thick. They're big. You yeah. know, you can be wiry and live, you know, yeah. and still yeah. strong. So, yeah, they yeah they are big, Sean. Yeah. Now that you mention yeah, it, I mean, and, and they can at. move a little bit, so it makes it a little tougher. Like Vales and Cobb can get up court on you. It's eleven to five. No, they're not small kids by any means. All right, it'll be Manhattan ball to come out of the backcourt. Here's a lean, the Grady High School product. He's across the midcourt line. And there are certain players you can look at. You say, yeah, that looks like a Grady player. Here's a, here's a drive in the lane, no good by Cobb, but they get the rebound, they pitch it right back out. They get this game on a rope right now, the way they're playing it, and it comes outside to Tuazon. And as he's switching over to go to the left hand, he got latched onto and a foul was called. Left-handed Tuazon from School of the Future. I believe that's in Manhattan. Left-hander uh, has good potential as a School freshman. School of the Future. School of the Future. Tyrone Fearon committed that foul. The ball goes inside again, and they can't convert, and the loose ball is snatched off the board by Asonia. It's 11 to five. Here come the Queensboro Tigers. They'll work it along the right perimeter, give it out to Gooden, Tremaine Gooden. Pitch it inside. Here's a Sonia going to the glass hard. No good. Sonia had a good inside shot, but couldn't get it to go. And here's Tuazon rushing it down all the way through the lane, going down, trying to pick up the offensive call was Kinslow. They're going to call Kinslow for the block on that. Nice, tough drive there by Tuazon, changing speeds in the lane and just throwing his defender off and then getting that angle and drawing the foul. He'll go to the free throw line, Josh. <laughs> Get ready for his first free throw. He is from School of the Future, as you said. That is his school, New York City. Makes the first one and makes it 12-5. You know, I was doing that. I was watching the Chef of the Future episode the other day day on the Honeymooners blowout. So I said, school of the future, chef of the future. Boy, they still run the Honeymooners blowout oh, yeah, on New they, Year's yes, Eve. Yes, they huh? do. Wow. Second one is good. 13-5. It's an eight-point lead. And Kinslow will look to be yeah, no doubt. It. They better get into it in a hurry. Even though they're playing here at home, they get blown out down at BMCC. They would not like to have that happen here. No doubt. And their ball handling has been a bit suspect. Uh, early in the game, and there's an example right there of a walk. They were trying to get it across the midcourt line, and an extra step was taken. As carrying that ball was Randy Williams, and no one has really had success against that pressure. And they give it in to Tuazon. Tuazon passes on the left wing. They come out with a jumper. Drummond again, he nails one, and that is a three-pointer. And that gives him six, nine points in the first half. Yes, Rod Drummond's come to play tonight. He's really doing a good job on both ends of the floor. And he's very controlled game, Joe. You don't, doesn't waste energy. You can see that it, it comes very easy for him. And that time, Tuazon took the ball out of the air, and you could see that he got banged underneath. Last time we were here here at Queensboro, the Tigers had the lead the whole night against uh, against Hostos Community, and they lost it in the very last seconds. Lost that ball game. It was a tough loss for the Tigers. Down low they go with the pass. Now Manhattan, as Sonia was trying to take that ball away, it'll stay with the borough of Manhattan, as they call Leo for his second personal. They look, uh, Sean, as you said, out of sorts, out of position, and uh, they need to pop into something positive. Yeah, and that's going to hurt them with Leo coming out the game. He's their best interior offensive threat. And for him to get two fouls with uh, more than, uh, you know, less, I mean, more than half the first half to go, it could be a blow. All right, they got a turnover, and turning it in the two is Fearon. And at 16 to 7, and the Tigers need to go to battle here tonight. They know they're going to be in a ball game. They're down by nine. Here is Aline over to the right corner. Aline looking, bounces it down low. Turning out with the basketball is the newcomer, Wayne Surin. And he almost lost that ball. He had it knocked out of bounds. Surin is from Lafayette High School, and they produced their share of good players over the years. 
Now uh, Coach Nigro's going to bring him over. He didn't like something he did, and he will sit him down right away. You see, uh, you know, you don't get much opportunity to um, be out of position with Danny. He's going to teach you a few things. They go to the right side. The ball knocked away from Tuazon. He'll throw it in from underneath. By the way, Nigro formerly coached here in the community college level at Kingsboro, and there is Drummond. Another one. I think he knows the lights are on, man, and he's on TV. Cause he, I think so. Yeah, yeah, his T, his, his T for brust, his uh, socks are high, he's ready. <laughs> you are he's right. He's ready, Joe, he's ready. He's from Brooklyn Conservatory, but he's not conserving anything right now. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Good working of the down low game as they get the ball inside to Tremaine Gooden, and it's 19 to nine. And the other way, Borough Manhattan tries to rush it. They get called for losing the ball out of bounds as they got that ball up court to Justin Daniels. But on our trip down there, the athletic director, Kelly, uh, told me that, uh, you know, Steve Kelly says, you know, we didn't bring any players in this year. Here's a jumper from the left side. That's good. And it is Tyree Firon hitting for two in a row. He's got four points. That was... Uh, uh, a shot to make it 19-11. Aline, head of the key. Aline goes down the right of the lane and got bumped and fouled. Well, anyway, uh, uh, Kelly uh, uh, down there said, uh, we didn't bring in any new players this year. So I says, the guys you're looking at, we, we had them all here when uh, Coach Nigro got here. So uh, he's done a very good job working with them, Sean. Yeah, and, and, and not only they seem to play together. I don't see it much arguing. Everyone knows their role. Uh, coach Nigro is a great coach. Yeah, he really does, is. Does a, does a great job organizing his, his players. His teams are always prepared and ready to work hard. And it's, you know, reflected in their record and their ranking in the region. That's Steve Kelly again, the athletic director down there, who is such a part of everything when you walk in the building. The second one is no good. The rebound is snatched in by Cobb, who puts it in. Steve always has a nice presentation down there in, in that gym. That gym is immaculate. He, he does a nice job with the community and letting the community in to use the facility. It's just a, you know, it's a great place to watch a basketball game. Yeah, it is. And yeah. It's, a, it's a great place in New York City uh, in terms of its game. 12.06 to go. It's a 21-11 BMCC lead, but the, uh, the, the Tigers are going to work a little bit and digging in. And particularly Tremaine Gooden and Tyrone Firon, and they're doing a good job, and they make a 21-13. That last follow by Gooden, and then we have a foul down on this end because, you know, you can't afford not to get back against this BMCC team. You make a good play, you got to hitch it up and get back down. And their veils got fouled at the basket. Boy, Joe, that ball got up that left sideline, blazing quick that time, and. You know, we can get early offense like that. It's always a coach's dream. First one, no good by Tony Bales. And by the way, we'd like to thank Pete Marchitello here at Queensboro, the athletic director who does such a tremendous job in setting us up as we come in each and every broadcast. And we wish him all the luck in the future. Second one, he's been here for quite a while now. Second one is no good there by Tony Bales. And it's 21 to 13. I remember Pete when he was just a young guy. He was uh, hosting his first CUNY tournament here when he first came in. And boy, the years go by, Sean. Uh, no doubt. I can I still remember myself hitting the floor at Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Playing ball, seems like yesterday. 21-13. The ball comes out on the left wing to Sherrod Drummond. And he has been tough to keep tabs on. So <laughs> someone reached out to him. That will be foul number two on Tremaine Gooden, and that will send him to the free throw line. It is 21-13, Burrow of Manhattan, 11.45 to go, and Manhattan goes to the line, and the person of Sherrod, and he can't put that in, and the Queensboro Tigers get the rebound, down by eight. Here they go into their half-court offense. Swing it up top for a look with Anthony Davis. Comes over on the right. Now they go further outside. And a baseline jump, that won't go. Trying to get a good look at it, and BMCC will rush it back the other way. BMCC puts it up top, and down the left of the lane when Vales couldn't hit. 
And then they follow it in. Oh, did that ball jump in the basket? 23-13. Mark Hodge Jr. in the ball game for Queensboro. He's on the left wing. It's a 10-point lead right now for BMCC. Yeah, Queensboro looking for points right now. Two of their two out of their three leading scorers on the bench with foul trouble. And Bales they, stepped in front of that pass, went down, couldn't put it in. Cobb with the follow couldn't get it. It's knocked back to Aline. Aline gave it up and gave it to Cobb, but he couldn't hit. And they had numerous opportunities and couldn't score. And down the other way is Samolis. And Samolis makes it an eight-point game, 23-15. Boy, they came out unscathed, and they were lucky there. And Cobb gives it inside, and there is Treor off the feed from Cobb. Well, you have to get back down, as we said, and it's 25-15 as BMCC gets right back up the court. No time to celebrate. Greensboro, nice move by Samolis, but they don't get back in time, and it goes right back up. <laughs> yeah. Right back up your gut. Mark Hodge Jr. had his pass knocked away. It comes back out, and Queensboro able to recover it. They go outside, try a three, and that won't go from Christian Moore, but they get the rebound, and they pass it back outside. And we're seeing John Storch for the first time for Queensboro. He's a real hustler. It's a 10-point game. They try a bad pass down low. Stolen again by BMCC. Vales looked like he could have jammed that one, Sean, but he went up and he laid it home. As soon as it's stolen, the ball is released. They find themselves goal. quickly and, and try their best to uh, keep up with this very good Manhattan, uh, Borough Manhattan team. At one point, I know the Borough of Manhattan were the third highest scoring team in all of Region 15. They were averaging about 90 points a game this BMCC club. That's a lot of points. All right, coming out of the backcourt is Mark Hodge Jr. A long talking to from Larry Danzler, and they needed that timeout. We're now at the 918 mark. Here's Samolis giving it in the middle over to Hodge Jr. He passes it down low. They come back out, and the weave did not work because Aline stepped into the passing lane. Then he fell backwards, lost the ball. And they get it underneath, and a foul will finally be committed as Anthony Davis ended up with the ball. And they got that ball back, Queensboro. They were flying by uh, the seat of their pants there, and they were able to come through with something. Try to hold on with your, the hair on your chinny chin chin is what they say. Well, the question is, Queensboro, which plays a lot of players. Um, they do. You know, they're looking for a combination that works when you're when you're struggling like they are, they're just looking for someone to step forward. That's true, Sean. And show their quality, Joe. They are not at a lack for players. They have plenty of them. First one, no good, Anthony Davis. They play a lot of guys here. They, they, they're trying to find something. Uh, Coach Danzler. In his first year. In his first year. You know, it's, it's a struggle right now. But, you know, I, anything can happen, Joe. You know how this is. I mean, we've seen teams that haven't won a game in CUNY Conference. You saw it last year. Last with this year. Team. And, then, and then come back and win the whole thing. So... You know, we might be seeing something right now, but the season's a long season. 27 to 16. It's an 11-point game as he made the second at the line. Anthony Davis crowded in on and getting it out with Treor. Jumper from outside, no good. And we have a loose ball, and there's a scramble for it. It'll stay with BMCC. And by the way, that was not Treor, that was Alamine Cabo, who's number 32, not number 33 Treor. But they're going to bring Treor right back in, and they bring him in for Cabo. So it is 27-16. It is Queensboro ball here. 8.44 to go in our first half. Joe Massey, Sean Couch with you. Working around the perimeter, Mark Hodge with it. Hodge puts it in the middle circles to John Boyce. They're working with an entirely new group now. They have Davis Boyce in the lineup. The ball goes into the corner. It is saved in that corner and sent out by Boyce. Now there's only nine seconds to shoot. Samolis looking for something. Gives it to Davis down the three second shot clock. The fans keeping the count for them and they do come up with the three point shot and they make it go. Yeah, Randy putting up that desperation three in two BMCC defenders' faces. Big shot for him. 
Now a turnover will give the ball back. It's Randy Williams. And, uh, the ball will go back to Queensboro. Randy Williams tying his sneaker, and they'll take it up. He already hit that three, and it is a 27-19 a game. Out of Bryan High School in Queens, New York. That's another good program. There's Christian Moore bringing it up. Randy Williams hit the three to get them back with an eight. Here's Samolas with it over to Williams. 24 to shoot. Gives it to the foul line to Anthony Davis. A quick turnaround. He got it up, but he couldn't get it to go. Rebound snatched by Cobb. They get it down court for BMCC all the way to the baseline. Went to Azan. And there's going to be a pushing foul. As he's very fast, Sean. He's a really athletic point guard. Yeah, I like free throw line. I like Tuzan. He uh, shows good handle, Joe, and he's left-handed. I, I like left-handed guards, and we haven't really seen what his jump shot is. But he's if good he does have that, he has that jump shot. You know, this could be a scholarship player. We were watching a kid, remember, from Kingsborough a couple of years ago that we were commenting about who played that type of game. But you're right about that. But that jump shot is so important. First one, no good. We were talking about one of the legends in New York basketball, uh, Sebastian Telfair. I, if he had a jump shot, what he could do, right? Here's the second. It's good. I think I think Basie has a has a jump shot, but if he was able to use it, it more, or I don't know, it hasn't I, it, been it, consistent yet. And you have to understand, he's I still think a you've young seen him player. More in the pros than I have, but he, he's still young. I think he came out a little early, though. Here's Davis with the ball going down nice the baseline move. and puts it in. Good move right there. That's good offensive philosophy, getting the ball inside that zone, playing a guy at that free throw line and let him rip and go yeah, to the that's rim. That's what you want to do, Sean. You want to get some easy shots and not play yourself out of the game with this team because if they get the fast break going, you're in hot water. 28-21. Here's Vales. He has to make a move. And does into the lane and puts it in. Yeah, super hey, tough move. I want to tell you, there. that was a Benjamin Banneker special <laughs> right there. 30 to 21. Super tough move yeah. right there. 30 to 21. Now, I followed Banneker for a solid three years, and that's the type of player they produce over there. That type of move right there. Nine point lead. Comes out of the key. Davis with it. Davis goes into the lane, lofts it up to the basket, no good. Rebound, take it off, and then ripped away. As trying to go up with the basketball were the Tigers, and they cannot get anything out of it. And down the other way goes Cobb, and Cobb went into the lane, and he got called. He wanted the basket there and a foul, but he got called for stumbling over a bit. 30 to 21. Fazan with a, a great pass there, but Cobb did not get his head around to locate the defender and got off balance trying to make that move and uh, got the offensive foul. Anthony Paul could not convert down here for Queensboro. That opened up the floodgate, and again, off balance was BMCC going to the bucket, and they got the turnover called on them. Now it'll be Queensboro's ball. They're only down by nine. Not showing a lot of consistency here, but they're trying to find something, as Sean said, to hang in the ball game. Here. I think they found it. It looks like they're going to try to hit that foul line and then create some penetration from 15 feet and in, which I think is a good philosophy given their size. If you look okay. at them right now, they have guy, the tallest guy out there on the floor is 6'1". Yeah, they're not going with a lot of size. Outside, Paul with it. Now they give it back to Williams. Williams between the circles over to Paul. Paul looks like a kid. Comes around the perimeter. I want to check his card, make sure he should be here. Here's a drive by. Williams driving all the way through, couldn't get it to go, and they tried to get it up court for BMCC. And it went to the sideline, and Larry Danzler caught it. It's going to be Queensboro ball. Coach Danzler in the right spot, but. I think his layup days are over, Sean. But uh, <laughs> he's trying to, you know, direct his team to stay in it, stay in it mentally here. That's a big, that's a big thing right here. Get down by nine. Got to play tough, guys. Here's Williams with the ball out on the perimeter. Williams puts it in the hands of Davis. They're really milking that clock. Now they go into the corner for the jump shot, and that tailed off from Jarek Bull, and it went out of bounds. Boy, I got. Five guards out there. You would think that they would really try to get the tempo. 
you know, quicker. up the tempo and just try to, you know, really extend the floor and play more 94 feet than half court. Drummond trying to put up the long shot, and it didn't go for BMCC, and Queensboro right back at it. They're down by nine. Drummond was really drumming them home before. He has 12 points. Here's Paul on the right for Queensboro in the middle to Davis. They go out in the middle of the circles, now into the corner and back out. Paul, 14 seconds to shoot. They're using every second on the shot clock. Baseline, they get it. Fall away jump, and that is what you call string music from John Boyce. So they get the basket to go, and then Tony Vales, I said he looked like he could jam it before, and he did right there, 32 to 23. Yeah, BMCC is dedicated to fast break offense, Joe. As soon as the ball goes through the hoop, they're looking to advance the ball on the pass to half court or better. Very exciting ball club. Davis missed that outside shot there, and here is BMCC quickly up with the rebound. Vales again, and he has been selected, as we said, the CUNY Athlete of the Week many times, which makes you think that he has a chance to be Athlete of the Year as he went down to the baseline, that ball knocked away. It'll be sent back in by Manhattan, and they tried to get it to They got mixed up there, the ball. Oh, absolutely. We're a small team. We have to be good on the dribble. And more than anything else, we're small and we're quick. we got to get back on defense. I'll tell you this. Nobody knows better about what this tradition of Queensboro basketball is all about than Kamal Steele. He was part of all the championship teams that they ran off here in the 90s. They were a tremendous group of players here at Queensboro under Tom Sinekson and the fellow before him that he took over for. They worked it around the perimeter. 13 seconds to go. Queensboro with the ball. 10 to shoot. 3.55 to go. And they send it outside. Now they go in the corner. Paul, and he fires and hits. Nice shot there by Anthony Paul, and it's 32 to 26. Sean, a three-pointer will really pick you up, too. 32 26, they're within six. Comes into the left corner, passed outside. Now they'll work it just short of the midcourt line. The two is on. Over to Vales. Vales fires from deep. No good. And you'd like to have Vales shooting the ball out there if you're Queensboro. Now they go down the baseline to Anthony Davis, who flies in from the right, glides to the basket, and gets fouled. And they're making a comeback of sorts here. Anthony's doing a great job, Joe. I'm really impressed with Anthony's effort this past five or six minutes going to the basket. He's being a man out there, really drawing those fouls and not getting a shot blocked. I mean, these guys are about 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, in there with good athleticism, and Anthony is showing that he can hang with them. Gerard Drummond picked up that foul, his first in the game, and Davis needs to make these free throws, but he can't hit the first. He has uh, three points in the game. The leading scorer for Queensboro split between Samolas, Fearon, and Good and all with four. Nobody has really lit up the board on his own. Here's the second, no good, and it stays a six-point game. 32 to 26. Vales was shut off. He goes in the corner to Drummond, who fires and misses. They keep it alive under there, and Vales goes up with it. Battling with Cobb, he couldn't hit. Comes back out, Drummond has it again, tries to loft it in, can't do it. And the Tigers of Queensboro get the rebound, is hanging in there was Bo. Now they try to direct it up court, and the ball was knocked away. It'll stay with Queensboro. They're only down by six, Sean. So hang in here. <laughs> 2.51 to go. Don't go anywhere, John Count. Where am I going? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right here. It'll right in the game. In. I join, know. join the action. <laughs> they go outside to Williams. 2.49 to go. Williams gives it on the uh, end around to Jarek Bolt. And he takes it between the circles. They are trying to pry things open, Sean, from top to bottom and use the shot clock and and mill and weave and get open looks. Here's a jumper from out there. I'd like to stick it, but Williams can't. The rebound goes all the way to the baseline. Queensboro gets to it. They're playing a very strong game. They're isoing people, and Boyce went down there, and there was a foul as they got the no, ball no, back out. No foul. They, they uh, called because they reset the shot clock oh, when okay. they shouldn't have. 
So, so they should figure have. out. They're going to try to figure out where they're at right now. And we're down to 226 on the game clock in the first half. It's 3226 Manhattan. So they have effecti- effectively Queensboro slowed down this game. You can't outrace them, so you're going to have to slow it down. And they have. And they're prying things open is what they're doing. Comes outside. They give it in the middle to Paul. Paul has been the quarterback. He directs it over to Bo. 26 to shoot. Again, using all that clock, Queensboro. This is taking on the look of a high school game right now, the way it's being played. <laughs> Paul looks like a high school player. He, he has that youthful look to him. And they work it around into the corner and steps were taken there by Williams. Williams took steps right now. Coach uh, Danzler is stressing something to Paul. He didn't like the way that play was run. But you have to give them credit because for the most part, they're back in this game. Cobb cut into the lane and couldn't hit. And I think they've taken Manhattan out of their game a little bit. They're off balance. They're not a half court team. And Cobb went in there and he couldn't convert and the ball went out of bounds. It's a good point, Joe. They they've really cut down on their transition offense. And that's the reason why you know you you, you feel you have a smaller team in there. They gotta get back on defense and they've done a good job the last three or four minutes. Paul outside, still twenty seconds to shoot on the shot clock, dishes it over to Williams. You remember Williams got it started with that big three. They were really sputtering. And here's a jumper from the left, and it could not be deposited at home by John Boyce. And there's when they're at their best. Drummond got up there, but he got blocked. And the ball went out of bounds off Manhattan. And it'll be Queensboro ball. What an effort to get back there, Sean. That time they did get back. Improved defense down by six after being down by 12 points. A minute 23, Queensboro's done a great job getting back into this game. Here is Williams to bring it up. They're working uh, what looks like a 1-3-1 one, one offense. Three men across the top of the key, and they all branch out and take a part in this offense. Here's Bo with it. Bo works it on the weave to Paul. Comes on the right side to Williams. Meanwhile, someone moving the baseline down there, and there are nine seconds to shoot, 57 seconds, first half. Paul, he had a good shot, but he couldn't ring it down. And the rebound is taken anyway by Queensboro, and they put it home. Just real scrappy ball right here by Queensboro, just getting the hands, deflections, just trying to make things happen. John Boyce couldn't. Uh, John Boyce put it in after Paul couldn't hit. Now they have a turnover, and they're only down by four. And they have succeeded in getting Borough Manhattan out of their game. That's what they've done. See if they can continue this. Here's Williams with the ball. Williams backs it out, 18 seconds to go. 18 on the game clock, 12 on the shot clock. They're looking for a good one down by four. They have been looking for a good one constantly. Here's a baseline jump that's off. Comes out again. Queensboro on it. Davis got blocked by Vales and will have a shot clock violation. Tony Vales blocked the shot. Let's see. Dan Nigro wanted something called that was not called as we're down to two seconds and a half. I think he wanted to say the ball went out of bounds. We should have more time. They're going to put a little more time on the clock. 3.1. They're up by four, so... Manhattan will try to get their biggest player in there to inbound the ball, who get a very good look and try to fire it somewhere. And Vales will take it up. And he fires a long one, and it is a three-point goal. Oh, my goodness. You you know, Sean, you don't give extra points on those long three-pointers. There's still three. But uh, there's one you didn't want if you were Queensboro. 35 to 28. That brings us to halftime. Joe Massey with Sean Couch. A seven-point lead for the visitors, the Borough of Manhattan, as we get set to come back on the court for half number two on QPTV. Tony Vales, 14 points to lead the Borough of Manhattan. And that shot that we saw just before the half expired that was uh, let go just past the half court line, giving him that 14 point 
total. And then we had Sherrod Drummond with 12 points for BMCC as we get right back into play here in the second half. And Queensboro's been working that out high, down low game, and they get it downstairs as they bring Leo Asonye back into the game. He spent a good part of that first half on the bench. He'll go to the free throw line here. As you can see, he has size, Sean. That's something they don't have on this club when they take Asonye out. Right, it, when they took Leo out, he had five rebounds and he only played about seven minutes. You can tell that you know he's a factor for the team and controlling the, the paint and also controlling the offensive and the defensive boards. Coach Danzler is trying to bring him along a little bit at a time. There are some very exciting things about what he does and then there are some things he really needs to work on and uh, as Sonia's brother as we set plays at York and I'm sure he can give him help in developing the second one is no good. It's his older brother. So they'll, uh, they'll work on him over the next couple of years and could have a very good finished product, we'll see. Trying to get across the midcourt line is Elaine, and he had that ball on his shin and kicked it forward, and he got called there, Justin Elaine, the sophomore out of Grady, and that'll... And he got caught by that pressure of Queensboro. Now Queensboro back within six. That three-point shot by Vales opened it up to go to the half. They get it inside. The ball was stripped out of the hands of Tremaine Gooden, but they get it back, Queensboro. And again, they're working that clock and exercising patience. And Asonye had it batted away by Cobb from behind and out of bounds. Asonye with Tremaine Gooden. They started the game on the front line. Jarek Bow in the lineup right now with Williams, number four. They get it inside and miss the shot. And then it is BMCC ball. They'll bring it up to the midcourt line and we'll have a foul call. That'll be the third on Tremaine Good, and he's got to be careful. Yeah, Tremaine is having a tough offensive night. It's not really getting a job done. The leading scorer for Queensboro, 10 points a game. I don't think he's on the board. No, he's not. Or very little on the board. I have him for four, Sean. You have him for four points. Yeah. Okay. Aline had to go follow that ball into the backcourt, so it'll be Queensboro ball as he could not touch it, of course. Or it would have been an over and back. 35-29, and Queensboro ends up with the basketball, and here they are with it. Working it around the perimeter. Come left side, pass it back out. And the ball taken off the board there by Tony Vales. Vales, the big player for BMCC, the really terrific player in the community college ranks this year, going all the way down the lane and the ball ended up out of bounds. It'll stay with Borough of Manhattan. So coming out the half, you see Queensboro at four players with four points and three players, uh, I mean, actually, and four with three points. So they had balanced scoring. But again, Joe, just going back to what you said, no go-to person, no leader on this team. You know, who's going to step up and be that guy that's going to, you know, take that, take, take the big shot, make the big shot, block that shot, you know, call out to guys when they're slacking on defense. Right now, there's not a vocal or even a focal point on the Queensboro team. Someone has to step forward. Cobb missed that shot. And then Queensboro came across, and Justin Aline committed his third foul for Manhattan. That's their second team foul, so it'll be Queensboro ball, and they're only down by six. Come up to the top of the key with it as they work again patiently. Gooden almost fell down in the lane and then lost the ball finally. And two is on, comes across the McCord line, and somebody latches on to him. Have that latching effect. Jarek Bow committed the foul. 35 29, it'll be Manhattan ball. Two is on, working in the backcourt right now, handling the ball for the borough of Manhattan, trying to get across court, and he almost slipped down and he lost it. And all the way comes Tyrone, uh, Tyree Fearon, and there was a foul on the play as he went up to the basket. So Tyree 
Almost blocked, but that ball was knocked out of bounds, they say, and it's no foul. It'll be Queensboro ball from underneath. That was a good play, actually. And Cobb trying to block the inbound knocked it down to the end line. So it's still a six point game, and no foul was registered. And it'll be thrown in by Queensboro. Looking to get it in, they locked it in way out on the midcourt area to Cobb. Come around the perimeter. Put it in the hands of Bo. Now they work it into the corner. Quick dish pass is made into Gooden. Gooden almost fell down, lost the ball, but it's recovered and fired in by Jarek Bo. Boy, they had to go through a series, but they got it to go. And down court, they just lead it to Cobb. And there is where they can hurt you right away. Uh, BMCC gets up and scores and makes it 37 31. That was fast. You see that, Joe? Right to half court, right to the corner of the box layup. They got a big front line, Vales, Cobb, and Treor on that front line. And there is a little arcing jumper by Randy Williams, who showed us a good shot in that first half. His second three, 37-34. But right back through the lane went Cobb, and this time it is going to be Queensboro ball on that drive by Cobb wow. there. <laughs> well, I tell you what, that was a charge, but what athleticism there by Cobb. He jumped from the uh, corner Right, you know, right by the elbow, and he jumped all the way across the lane, Joe, and made that shot. Boy, a tremendous leap right there. Well, right now, Sean, Queensboro within three, and Randy Williams is trying to get to the basket, and Manhattan was going for the block, and this time they are going to signal a foul to the sideline. So Randy will end up at the line, and believe it or not, he has a chance to pull Queensboro within one point if he makes these. They're down 37 to 34. And they've done a very good job of once again dictating the pace as they come out in the second half. First one is good. Randy Williams has played a nice little role. He had the two three-point shots. He has six up to then, and then he hits the free throw and gets them within two. Just when you think uh, things are going to turn against you, well, Queensboro came up with a nice little game plan, and they've hung in this game. Second one is no good. Two-point lead for Borough Manhattan, and here's what they do. All the way down went Vales. He got into the lane, and Asonia was turned to the side and did not establish position, so they're going to call Leo on that foul. Speed can kill, as they say, and they try to use it to their advantage, certainly. That'll be the third on Leo Asonia. You know, Sean, if you turn sideward, you're never going to get that call. Vale's first, no good. Well, he didn't deserve to get that call. He, he was out of position. Got to plant those feet. And if you're going to take that charge, you take it right up the chest. And usually you get that foul. Vales missed both, though. And the rebound, Randy Williams, who is really protecting that ball and really playing a role for the Tigers. 16.52 to go. Joe Massey, Sean Couch. And we're watching a battle now here in Queensboro's gym. Here's Firon with the ball backing it out. Firon gives it off to Randy Dave Williams. Now they'll pass it on the right side, and they say he picked up his uh, galloping foot on that drive, did Tremaine Good, and so he bucked into a traveling on that. You know, if you take that extra step before you get going, they're going to call you down because you throw the defense totally off, and that, that's illegal. Pass goes down low. It comes to the baseline. Working it out is Manhattan. They're trying to go a little half court now. Two is on trying to razzle dazzle inside. Off the board. It's taken by Queensboro. They're trying to tie it up. Fear on. They will not allow that. They say offensive foul. It stays a two point BMCC lead. So I'd like to see a college rule where if a guy is really deep underneath the basket for that foul not to be called or for, or for it to be, you know, uh, a foul on the uh, defender. Because, you know, once you're like at a certain point in the basket. You could just stand yeah, there and yeah, stop it, anything. Yeah, yeah. It just, it, I think there should be a. But you could lose a few teeth too. Yeah. You know, <laughs> they should now, make a rule maybe there. Maybe you're right. Maybe there should be like a little arc down there. 
that when it's penetrated in there, that's that's illegal. Here's the miss by Vales, but the follow is good as they followed in on the play and BMCC gets back on the board and they had been held off for a little bit. It's Justin Daniels there, six seven sophomore from St. Michael's. 39, 35, that's Mount St. Michael's. Mount St. Yep. Michael's in the Bronx, that's yep. right. That's right. Four point lead for BMCC and that came at a very good time for the Panthers of BMCC, but now Daniels reaches in and commits the foul as uh, John Storch was trying to back in on him and he reached over his uh, shoulder. That is six team fouls on BMCC. They do have to be careful. We'll get a quick look at Coach Nigro is not happy with that situation. He's going to be up on that bench, uh, Sean, for most of the second half. You're going to watch him. Comes outside. Sharif Firon with it. Now they pass it in the middle circles to Gooden. Over on the right to Bo. And in the course of play tonight, Queensboro's worked out a very nice game plan. And there's a drive and missing was Gooden. And then out of bounds with the ball was Tuazon. His sneakers were right on the inline in front of the Queensboro bench or the sideline and they all jumped off and played official. That'll be Queensboro ball. You didn't have much chance of getting that call going your way. 39-35, Queensboro still down by the four. Faking, cutting into the corner, Bo, and he releases it, but he can't get it to go. Two is on, brings it the other way. We're at the 15 minute mark, gives it over to Drummond, and Drummond got a body uh, contact foul against Queensboro. It wasn't a hold, it wasn't a push, just somebody moved towards him, and he hit him with the body. Second foul on Jarek Bull. Five team fouls on Queensboro, six on Manhattan. Manhattan's not really a half court team though, Sean. We're seeing that. 39-35. Now they'll try to get something going with Vales inside. And Vales cut to the basket and they called a foul and they're gonna give him the basket uh -huh. and the foul. 41-35 as Vales got that off the glass inside. Well, that was grown man style right there. So referee Charles Cruz giving him that M1. He catches that ball in traffic like a wide receiver, and then his hands is coming down on yeah, him, and he just... Nobody knew where that man, ball was Joe, coming. He, he just strongly brought the ball up and banked it high off the glass. And that move and the free throw makes it a seven-point game again, and now... Queensboro having trouble getting out of the backcourt. Randy Williams can't get it past the defense. And he's, I think the problem for Queensboro now is going to be staying in what they've attempted to do without falling behind this club because then it probably won't work. Then they're going to have to open up the offense a little bit. But they've been very patient. They've taken a lot of air out of that ball, and we'll see if they can keep doing that. Ball comes in to Sherrod Drummond. He's in the corner and on a tightrope situation. He could not stay in bounds with that ball. They wanted uh, the call that he was kind of pushed out or nudged that way, but they're not going to get it. So it'll be Queensboro ball. And Dan there saying, just let's get that ball up court and forget about it. 42-35. Tell you this, the Tigers have been very game to play this one tonight. They have not thrown up their hands. They've uh, they've come back with a nice little game plan tonight. Outside is Tremaine Gooden. Now they give it over to Tyree Ferron. Ferron had the ball swiped from behind, fell forward with the ball and lost it to Daniels. And here is BMCC with it. Here's Justin Aline switching hands, going in there, missing. Ah. And that gives Vale an opportunity to clean it up. And they say, good, and a foul. And that's 19 Tony for Tony Vale. You know what made that so nice? Two Tony grabs the ball, uh, excuse me, Joe, and he doesn't bring it down, quickly jumps off his foot, no, off very uh, quickly off of his foot, and he lays it up with his left hand. Nice display of yeah. power and grace. Yes, and he very good the free skill. Throw. Very yeah. nice skill right there, not bringing the ball down. Right up with the left hand. 44-35. Missed the free throw, though, and it stays a nine-point game. Now Queensboro is having difficulty, and you see, Sean, their offense is going to pick it up now because, you know, they, they can't take too much time off that clock. Daniel stole it, gets it up to Vales. They're turning the ball over, and they say offensive foul on Vales here. 
which is a big one for Queensboro because they've fallen behind by nine. Dan yeah, Nigro does not agree with that call, and he is voicing his disapproval. But it'll be Tiger ball. Tigers are in a tough situation now. 13.57 to go. They're down by nine to the Panthers of the borough of, community, uh, borough of Manhattan Community College. Let's see if they can do anything about it. They bring Randy Williams back in. He was a spark plug earlier. And Kinslow, a no-look pass to Asonia, who goes in there, and Daniels with the long arms blocked him. Then he blocked Kinslow. He blocked two shots, and they get it up court, and a foul will be called. That was all big Mr. Daniels in there. Yeah, that was a uh, block party. <laughs> Down in the personal foul. Leads to a nice fast break, and... Once Borough Manhattan gets out on that fast break, it is quick and in a hurry. Just hitch up your wagons, guys. Wayne Surin followed that play in, and Wayne Surin will end up at the line. The youngster we talked about from Lafayette. 44-35, BMCC with 13.39 to go on the clock. Second one is in and now it's a 10 point edge so slowly the pendulum is turned back the other way and Queensboro is in a little bit of trouble here here's Randy Williams with the ball Williams guarded by a lead and they're picking up that pressure again forcing Queensboro to handle it on the perimeter Kinslow with it Kinslow gets a screen from a Sonier was that a moving screen it was and a Sonier got called for it he did not set properly and trying to set that pick there. So they're making fundamental mistakes now. Leo just can't stay on the floor. Just came in. He got his fourth foul. That's his fourth foul. Can't get any rhythm. I'll be honest with you and I'm not downgrading a Sonia in any way but they were playing a little better without Leo because he's slowing them down a little bit but uh, you know as I said he is a, 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 a player in Who's, uh, who's being worked on, and they're gonna try to mold him into a big time player, and it takes time. Here's a lean, bringing it across, gives it over to Surin. Surin goes all the way down the left of the lane, and someone tripped him. I don't think it was, it was an inadvertent trip, but it was a trip. And Surin will take a spot at the free throw line, and Manhattan with 13-11 to go, has this game back. First personal foul in uh, the positive uh, column they wanted it. Sharon sure, has a major Wayne high Sir. top. Yeah, he does. Afro going right there. It's almost 80 shade, style. And, and a shaved spot. Yeah, almost 80 like, style like kid and play. Afro. It is first. It's almost 80 style, not quite. 11, has some sort of modernicity to it. <laughs> it's a Larry Keenan do. <laughs> Yeah, it has the uh, mohawk look to it, too. Right, right. But I remember some of those those hairstyles in the 70s. Uh, the Larry Keenan, of course, Dr. J didn't always have a close cropped hair. Second one, no good, and they get it back out. It's an 11-point lead for Manhattan. That one goes all the way to the sideline, and Queensboro sweeps it up, and they're down by 11. I like the way you put that, though, Sean, in modernicity. I like look. that. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I like combining words that don't mean anything but oh, mean something. Oh, that's terrific. You make something. <laughs> you make it mean something. There you go. Here's Williams with the ball. They give it out to Davis. They're down by 11, Queensboro. 12 seconds to shoot, and they really need something positive here. They haven't had anything for about three minutes. Coming up on the 12-33 mark in the game, Dave Williams gets in the lane. And Tuazon fell backwards, and they're going to say what? I believe they're going to say a hold on Tuazon or one of his teammates. That's the third on Tuazon. You can't say two on Tuazon. You have to say three on Tuazon. And then you have Randy Williams four going to the line, so we're getting all messed up with our two threes and fours. Here's Williams' first one. Good. Eight points now for Randy Second Williams. He has played a role in this game, Sean. Powell. He came off the bench, you remember, and ignited them a little bit. But they've fallen back into a, a very tough 
make one make one uh, three minutes ago and give up a few baskets to Manhattan pattern now that's not going to get it done Williams with his second good we're gonna have to make a stand sooner or later on the defensive end you know they did a little bit of it towards the end of the half with they the smaller are, group they are keeping the score down that's for sure there's a jumper from the corner that's a three and that's where Mr. Sherrod Drummond started out tonight and he gets a two on that. They give him two. No, they give him three. They give him three, and that makes it a 49-37 lead. Queensboro gets fouled, but now we have a 12-point game. And Randy Williams got fouled up here. That'll put him at the line with two shots. Now, if he can make these two, he makes it a 10-point game. 15 points for Sherrod Drummond. As Sean said, he had the teeth polished. He had the socks pulled up. He was ready for tonight. Probably at the dinner table with his mom. I'll be on TV. I got to yeah, be ready. And, absolutely. And he, he's definitely come to the party. That's it. Right. He's done a nice job tonight. <laughs> done a real good job. I like that. You know what? You know, the kids yeah. in CUNY, they don't get a chance to be on TV often. But when they uh, are, when they you are. think about it, you got to be ready to play. You got to, like, put your best foot forward. And he's definitely done that. 11 points now. For Williams, and it's 49-39. It's a 10-point game, 12.08 to go. Here the ball popped over to Drummond. Drummond didn't Why expect to get the ball, and as he came around, they'll call a timeout. What, what I'm seeing here with, with both teams, you know, Queensboro's going to have to make a stand. They have to stop Vails, and they have to control this break. If they can find a way to get some consistent offense out of someone, Joe, you know, someone has to step up and knock down a couple of threes and just really take charge of this offense. Randy Williams had done it earlier. Let's see if they can get somebody else to step or, or if Williams can do it. 49-39. Here is Manhattan going into the corner and a uh -huh. jumper good by Daniel. Justin Daniel. And he's had a, uh, a couple of big plays in this game, Justin. And it's 51-39 to now. As he knocked down that corner jumper to raise the lead again. And Williams was backing in and he just gave the ball away to Aline. Did not see him. And up court they go to Drummond. And Drummond leaves it off for Vales. And they are trying to uh, uh, get this game where they want it. BMCC off that timeout. That is obviously what the word was in the huddle. Let's try to clean this baby up here. There's a jumper from outside. Samolas off glass. And you get a three even if you get it off glass. That's you know what? what you do. I've seen Pete do that more than once. So at first you think that's like a lucky, well, not a lucky shot, a fortunate shot. But uh, he, 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 he does that. that. He does it. Yeah. That's his thing. So That was a nice-looking three-pointer off the glass. It was very, very soft, very sweet. Oh, Ooh. Drummond coming back. Ooh. Drummond still trying to give the folks uh, who are at the dinner table with him something right, to cheer about. Right, right. He has to get a copy of this one so far. He's, He's got, the star of this game. He's got 18, 56, 42. It opens up a little bit. Storch gets it from Williams, has it blocked away. Davis recovers it. You just don't have a chance with those long arms of Daniel down around the basket. He has about four blocks tonight. Here's Williams from the corner. No good. Rebound cleaned up by Storch. Well, Storch is a hard worker. John he gets Fish. the basket. 56-44. A lean across. We're at the 10-minute mark, and BMCC by 12. Daniels uh, gets around uh, Storch. And a high percentage shot, Sean. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? It was fundamentally right because he ripped through and had a nice big dribble to the rim and then gets up high. Almost got caught on that one, Ralph. It wasn't a clean dunk. No, it wasn't clean. But, but, but it was a dunk, so we'll take it. 58-44. <laughs> Here's the move down the baseline, and that'll be two. Dropped in for Randy Williams. He now has 13. He's really picked up his offense, as we've said. He's been the offensive bright spot. And coming back for 23 is uh, Mr. Vales. So Vales makes it 60 to 46. Storch goes in there and Daniels fouled him. Going for the block. 
Well, the score is starting to elevate a little bit. It's 60 to 46, and uh, Queensboro has to go all out now and play an up and down game with Manhattan. They really have no choice. It's only 9-14 to go. This is a team, as I said earlier in the year, was averaging 90 points a game offensively. And Queensboro's tried to keep the score down as much as they can, but they have no choice right now, Sean. I don't know if they can play up and down with this crew here. They're too physical, and I think athletically they're, they're a bit superior to the Queensboro team. But if they take uh, a minute off that clock at a time, they're not going to be in this game anyway. So you got to win it one way or the other, and this is the only way available to them now. Yeah, you got big Justin Daniels ripping through and, you know, making some good moves here. I don't know. It doesn't look too good here in Queens. And you're right. It wasn't, the home team. It wasn't a clean the stuff, but he got it over the rim, and it, it had a lot of a Less. Nevertheless. <laughs> it was exciting. It was exciting. <laughs> as long as you have style, you know. Here's Tua Zahn. Uh. A three is on for two is on. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 there you go. And 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 check it. I'm feeling him because I think he has a lot to offer as a player, and he's not because he has a lot of talent. He's not showing, but I think he has the whole package. He can shoot it, dribble it, distribute it. So yeah, two is on's a good player. 63-48, and there was a foul call there. Looked a little bit with the floppy kind of hair a little bit. A little like Maravich on that one, but you know. Let's 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 state facts. Yeah, yeah, right. Unless right. you could score 60 points a game, you're not married. Yeah, and he, you know, he has good rhythm with his ball yeah. handling, which I saw. And you know, he, he he's determined to push it, determined to make things happen. That's always a good quality. Here's Samolas to the line, 63 to 48. First one is good. Substitutions for the 63-49. I did give you the other part of that Madison Square Garden story that I got to see the San Antonio Spurs right. up close and. And so, Sean, that's what I do sometimes. I'm down in Manhattan, maybe I'm having dinner, and I see the Knicks are playing that night. I say, I'm going to go wait near the players' entrance. I just want to see these guys. It, it kind of charges you up a little bit. Second one, no good. Do any of the Knicks charge you up? Oh, well, absolutely. I, right. But, you know, you see them all the time, so, you know, you want to maybe see the visitors a little bit. Here's a drive in the lane and oh. the miss, and then it's dropped in on the rebound. Yeah, they're just having fun out there, there now yeah. at BMCC. Yeah. It's That's Vales. Vales on that one. Yeah. He's got 25, and it's 65-49. Does a nice job attacking the offensive boards. Uh, not, to knock, not to knock the league today, because it's still, for the entertainment dollar, it's still a fine you know, game to attend and watch. And I love NBA basketball. I can't do without it myself. Uh, the period of the 90s and late 80s, you just can't top that period. The players were just so so good, Sean. You know, Isaiah Thomas and uh, just uh, you know, uh, uh, you had the round mound of rebound, and you had Irving at the end of his career, and you had, I mean, just play Jordan. And just that, players that were whole, incredible. That, yeah, that whole Chicago crew, that Boston crew was uh, uh, Elijah Wan, those guys, Ewing, and yeah. just terrific players. Sixty-five, forty-nine. Here comes Queensboro. Rodman, you know, for all his antics, what a ball player. Queensboro works it in the middle to Samolis. They're down 65 49. Come on the right side. Work it in the middle. 15 to shoot. They got to get the shots up quickly now. Samolis rolls in there and can't put it down. And Tuazan ends up with it. Samolis has eight points tonight. Couldn't get it there. Drummond missing, wow. Vales trying to up his point total even more. He has 25, and he got fouled there. He'll go to the free throw line. Now, I'm mean, looking at Vales. He looks a bit like Quentin Richardson out there on the floor, the headband, the high socks. And, of course, same, the, num the same number. One of his forerunners there at Benjamin Banneker was Gary Forbes. Ah. And you remember Gary, the way he could play. And uh, Good player, UMass. Uh, went on the... I'm not sure which team he tried out with, but I think he's New got Jersey a, Nets. The Nets, yeah, got a couple of NBA tryouts. He might yeah. be in the USBL, right? Not USBL, in the uh, NBDL right now. Terrific player. Terrific player. I mean, they matched up with Telfair and Lincoln in the final at the Garden one year. Just a tremendous ball game. Second free throw, no good. Rebound is put in, though. 
as Surin got in there, and uh, he has very good ball play. He's at Villanova, played yeah. in the national championship game last year. Yeah. Um, and right now he's a star. He's starting at Villanova as a senior. Very tough player in the paint, around the foul line area. Uh, true low post player and, and pivot player. Yeah, Tony's a good player. 67-49. And although Telfair, I think, captured his third straight title at that point, or second, one of the two, I think Pena played as big a role in that title as anybody. Comes to the right side. Here's a drive in the lane. They go on the baseline. Here's a jumper by Good and deflected and taken out of the air by the Borough of Manhattan. And they are owning this game right now because it has gotten back to where they want it. Get up court and release shots and do things like that. Tip it in with Justin Daniels, and I believe he has six points. Yeah, that was a dominating sequence for Daniels, blocking the shot, running the floor, and then getting that tap offensive rebound for two. So they have a lot of physical ability when they get around the basket. They're very hard to defend, 69-49. But there was a point where Queensborough really slowed them down and made it difficult for them. Asonia cutting to the basket, no good for Queensborough, 6.50 to go. There's a big tie-up with uh, Ban uh, Banneker, uh, Burrow of Manhattan ahead by 20 now, and the ball will go over to Number Manhattan 30, on the tie-up. Oh, we're Number talking nine. about Benjamin Banneker. If you're just joining us or you have been joined with us and say, why are you talking about Banneker? Because Tony Vales, the star forward for uh, BMCC, who has 25 points, came out of that school, so we're kind of going down the lineage and talk about the great players that have played there in the last several Boy, years. Boy, that's a wrap. It's a wrap for Leo. Wow. Leo is Sonia reaching in, got Didn't called on his really fifth foul. Number 25, by the way, Wilson. there is a Lincoln player Wilson. also Wilson. playing at Brooklyn College by the name of Matsikov, who played with Lincoln <laughs> and was part of that championship run, but he was on the bench. So Yuri Matsikov. You probably saw him last 14, year in the community college final Wayne for Sarah. Kingsborough. If you covered that. Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Big Russian kid. And uh, he is now playing with Brooklyn College. We'll have Amadou Traor go to the line as uh, Sonia has fouled out with his team down by the 20 points. And Leo found it tough tonight, John. Four points. Really couldn't fit into anything that was being done out there because uh, outsized by the or out quick and physical by the Manhattan front line. First free throw, good. No rhythm tonight, just didn't uh, execute well. Defensively, he you know, got caught behind a couple of people, just committed a couple of bad fouls. And you know, without him in the game, Queensboro doesn't really have an inside presence and there's no one to challenge the bigger and taller team that uh, Manhattan, uh, Burr Manhattan presents to them. Second one is no good Second by by uh, Treor at the line. Go ahead, Sean. And, you know, 70 it, to 49, we have a foul and, on BMCC. And it's a shame because I think he's the guy that Queensboro needs to step up and be that leader. He has to be that dominating factor. Leo, you know, he, he has light feet. He has good hands. He has a nice touch. He can get over the rim. You know, someone has to talk to him about maybe just trying to dunk everything, just getting to that basket, you know, getting up on the rim and just dunking everything and just being that aggressive beast that he could be. Well, he maybe, I think he has it. Yeah, has maybe some of that will come with some maturity and uh, being around basketball for another year. And, uh, you know, then maybe sometimes, Sean, you don't even have to teach him all that much. He starts doing things to be competitive. 70 to 51. Here's Surin bringing it across for Manhattan. Now they give it on the right side for a fall away by Drummond, who came out of the gate shooting tonight. Gets his rebound and fancies it up. It gives us a little highlight move there, too, to go along with his outside jumps. 72 to 51. Sherrod Drummond. Here's a jumper on the left side, Randy Williams. Now, if you want to pad your point total, this is the point of the game for that. 72 53, 558 to go. Samolis is going to leave it off. And Gooden gets in the scoring column for six points. 72 to 55. Well, obviously, it's going to be timeout time for BMCC because a little bit has been shaved off that lead, 72 to 55. So it's not unthinkable 
to imagine uh, Queensboro making this one close before it's over, and we have a timeout. Well, it could happen if they uh, possibly win a, you know, some half-court or full-court pressing. Uh, Queensboro is a very good pressing team. I'm surprised that they haven't tried it. Maybe they feel that BMCC is that good of a passing team that could nullify the press. Let me ask you, if BMCC wins this game, who would you give player of the game to? Tony Vales for 25 points. Uh, Sherrod Drummond for setting the tone with all big jumpers and just coming out and laying it right to Queensboro immediately. I, I don't know. I don't know who I'd give it to tonight. You know, that's a good question. I think Tony Vales has done an excellent job tonight just displaying his overall skills. While Shaman came out and shot the ball well, Drummond has uh, done it all. He's, he's got 20 points. Yeah, yeah. He has 25 20. for Vales. You know, he's, he's gotten to the basket. He's blocked shots. He's rebounded the ball. He's gone inside and out he made it through he, he made it through brooklyn conservatory <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to give him all credit all, all these things you got to give him uh, credit we're, we're listing academic credentials now also <laughs> all right academically he got through brooklyn conservatory is that is that a strong yep, academic yeah, institution but, yeah but tony vales came from benjamin banneker academy oh, all right so, okay yeah. you're talking about drumming then all right <laughs> yeah Drummond came from uh, Brooklyn Conservatory. Yes. Oh, all right. It sounds it sounds formidable academically. <laughs> it does. I don't know though. It really does. <laughs> Here's a lean. We'll have to check that out, Sean. Here's a lean. 5:40 to go. It's 72:55. A lean to the right side, being played by Kinslow. Comes down the baseline and makes a nice move in there, and he got fouled. And he got poked in the eye a little bit or rubbed in the eye a little bit. He came out of uh, Aline, this number three for Manhattan, came out of a basketball factory in the mid-'80s, 90s, right up to about 2002. Still on the map and still doing well, but you're talking about Grady High School. First one is good. Jack Ringle had such a big part in that program, though. And after he stepped down, it went down a little bit. Jack you know, Ringle. It's tough. It's tough to replace legendary the coaches. Legendary New York City High School coach Jack Ringle. Drummond hit both. Legendary. He did a great job for over, I think, about 25 years he was there, Grady, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 74 55. And I had the great fortune of being around him for a couple of years during the end of his time there. And, uh, I, I was I, I I enjoyed it. I mean the guy knows basketball. 74-55. Put it right in the middle circles here to Randy Williams. Williams dribbles the ball off his foot, has to go back and pick it up. Seven seconds to go. Williams between the circles. Williams right of the key, fires it, no good. Storch, good rebound, and he got fouled. <laughs> Daniels. He can put his arms in places he don't even know he's getting them, and he got called. For his arm could wrap around you a couple of times. Daniels is a, a legitimate six foot seven, and he plays big. Uh, his arms make him like a seven footer. Yeah, he plays big. He has nice athleticism, and you know, on this level, he's a dominating factor. Storch first free throw, no good. That is always very tough to play against because you don't know where to put that shot up from because he comes at you and then he could get your shot at the right of the basket and you don't even know his arm's going to extend out there. Storch with his second good. Storch makes it 74-56. 4.51 to go. Queensboro is a run away from being back in this game. And we're talking about a solid run. Here's a lean. They're going to take time off the clock, though, BMCC. A lean to the right of the key. Bursts down the left. Puts it up. Didn't have enough on it. Cobb is able to rescue it. He has eight points tonight. He's been re relatively quiet, but you know he's there. 76-56. So if you don't have enough dealing with Vales, there goes Cobb. And then this guy here, Daniels, he has a nice little assortment of front liners. 18-point lead for Manhattan, working on it again. 4.13 on the clock. Joe Massey, Sean Couch, Drummond trying to hit another three from out there. Couldn't get it to go. And the rebound snatched by Queensboro. Queensboro doesn't have a win in the CUNY coming in 
And it looks like they're going to be winless still. Storch could not get to that. But, Sean, in truth, they should have had a win last time we were here against Hostos, and they gave that ball game away. Yeah, that was a tough loss for them. They should have beaten Hostos, but a series of really tough calls and, and uh, turnovers. The ball handling towards the end of the game really uh, hurt them. And, and then Sonway fouled out that game also. So, yeah, Leo is Sonia. You know, they, you know, it's, can't really give games up like this, but... Manhattan right now is a, a clearly superior team. Yeah, they are running in a few subs and doing what they want now. They have this game tucked away. Surin hit that jump shot. And I'm going to give Surin six points in the time he's been out there. With the modified hairstyle, 78-58. <laughs> it's a 20-point lead. 3.37 to go. He gets it for, you know, Three different things, Sean. Effectiveness, right. minutes that he put in, and right. for hair. And for the hair. The huh? hairstyle, because we've enjoyed it. He, he even uh, lent into our fashion part of the uh, program tonight. No doubt. Versatility here um, <laughs> on, Q <laughs> on CUNY TV. You have, to, you have to have versatility to be in CUNY. There you go. Here's a 20-point lead for Borough Manhattan. It had been trimmed down to 15. The coach uh, called the timeout, Dan Nigro. Right. Obviously, he's looking for big things from this team. I mean, he doesn't even like a 20-point lead being shaved down. He's looking for the Tigers to get it in the win column as effectively as you can and make the plays you have to make. Now, Danny Nigro is, he works on, like you said, that Bobby Gonzalez energy. He's on maximum all the time. And for him to inherit a team like this, I mean, wow. No, wow. I, I mean, the athleticism these guys now have. Now, if we and, could uh, get Danny over you know, after wow. the game for a moment, you will see what I – he will have no voice, for yeah. sure, to yeah. talk to us. I mean, this is a good-looking team. This is one of the better junior college teams that I've seen athletically on this level. 20-point lead. Ball comes in to uh, Queensboro. They won the title in the community college ranks in the CUNY a couple of years ago. And they did it with their long-time, long-time coach who had to step down a couple of years ago. Sitting on the side and watching things and being like an, uh, a director of coaches, Gene Carroll. And Gene was there for, I believe, about 22 years. And they finally won a title with Gene, and it was a very happy thing for the Queensboro, uh, excuse me, for the Borough of Manhattan to get that title for Carroll. They go down the baseline, they lose the ball out of bounds, 78-58. But that was a big win for them, Sean, because they knew Carroll was gonna step away from the program and they wanted to give him something to be happy about. I think he had won one title previously, but he had been so close for several years and they brought in a, a fella to run the club and they did a very good job and they secured the title. And they beat this Queensboro team to win it at Kingsboro Community College, 78-58. Here's Manhattan with the ball, 2.53 to go. Manhattan works it in the corner, they pass it back outside. Here's a jumper left side, new good. And it ends up going out of bounds, that was Surin. Well, we're going to take one of those points away for that shot there, right? <laughs> you lose one of your uh, all-star points tonight. Yeah, nothing going right now for Queensboro. And, um, you know, as Larry Dancer has to be asking himself, I need five guys that I can trust that are going to play in a way where we can have some continuous offensive flow and motion and then defensively, you know, really have a plan to just go out there and really bust their butts and, you know, right now at 0-10, they're not really showing that fire, that flair right now. But knowing Larry, this team will be ready come playoff time, and that's when it counts. Yeah, 78-58. He is new to the program. Jumper from outside won't go for Queensboro. 2-17 to go. BMCC brings it up with the 20-point lead. But he's been with Sinekson, didn't he? Uh, he coached with Sinekson for a while, didn't he? No, he that he did it. Oh, that he, was that was uh right, right, yes. right. The other coach, the right. coach that passed, passed away. away. Right. right, right. Okay, so then I have, to, I have to take back, back, back what I said in terms well, of Well, that's why that's why Danzler came right. in, right. and he did not have everything prepared because that death had taken place right. uh, during the off season, and then Danzler was brought in, 
and he had to assume the coaching duties. Right. And he has to have a while, I guess, to get things the way right. he needs it. His first year, these are, you know, these are kids he had not recruited, so he has to try his best to adapt his team to his style. There was a scramble in the backcourt, and they came up with the ball on the BMCC side. We're down to a minute 54 to uh -oh. go. Alameen Kaba has checked back in, number 32. They work it up high. Surin with it. Surin passes it to Aline. They're still passing the ball, and they're working their offense, and give them credit for that. As a little driving uh, left-hander by Tim De Silva goes, and it's 80-58. to 58. So even though they have all of their subs on the court and Vales and Cobb have sat down, they're working the ball, still working their offense. 80 to 58, they get into the lane here with Anthony Davis and he got fouled. He got bumped going to the basket. So Larry Danzler, who is assisted by a former Tom Senexson player on the bench, Kamal Steele, who I believe uh, won conference honors one year. It's just a terrific player. Trying to remake things and get Queensboro back on the top of the CUNY, and it'll take a little time. Davis with his second, no good. Rebound to his own. Minute 13 to go. Now they come down and they leave it off inside, and the basket is made, and it's. 82 to 60. They've blown it out a little bit here at the end. A 22 point advantage for Manhattan. It was closer than that. And Queensboro made a run in this game, but they couldn't keep it going. Tyree Fearon tries to cut down the lane and lost the ball. And here's Tuazon. Tuazon all the way down, gives it to Surin, and he can't hit. Woo! Uh, and now the other way is Davis. And it's showtime here at the arena and Davis got fouled. Wow. You like that, huh? Yeah, that was straight. Bounce Magazine playground right there. Josh Tuazon with the crazy in and out move. Uh, he made that with his uh, friends a few times wow. somewhere. Just broke the defender down. He took a seat on him. Got the crowd dancing. <laughs> See him, Joe. They, I, what's that dance called, Joe? You saw that. Was that? I, that might have been the chicken noodle soup right there. Well, I tell you, you know, I'm still stuck in the hustle days. So. <laughs> you still hustling and bumping, huh? Yeah, first one, no good. I think that wow. was one of the greatest dance songs ever made, though. What a beautiful work by Van McCoy. Three throws. <laughs> 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 like you flash back in your house just turned into a disco. I can see the blue light on right now in the bedroom. Oh, What's going man. on? 84 to 61, 24 so seconds classy. to go. Flashing back to his John young Couch years. bringing us back to high school here. 18 <laughs> seconds to go. It's 84 to 61. Tuazan's going to hold on to that ball, Sean. That's he made a dandy play before, but he's just going to now he's just going to dribble it out. And that's going to be it. So Manhattan wins it 84 to 61. Take that, Tony Monero. All right. Game is over. And uh, what can you say? I mean, they gave it a run, but they just didn't have enough guns to uh, be in it at the end. That's yeah. simply put. Yeah, you're right, Joe. And BMCC is a very good team, superior athletically. Good guards, good size underneath. They have six seven. They bring six six and six six off the bench. So, you know, and then they have Tony Vales, who's a great all around player at six three. So this is a very good team, and a team that I think can not only challenge in the CUNY, but maybe even outside the region. I think so. You know, if they play the game that Dan right. Nigro wants them to play, and I I assure you that on other nights when they're playing maybe a little more of a top-notch uh, team, maybe they play a little differently, too. I don't think we're going to have time to All get right. Coach Nigro over. Tony Vales had 25 points tonight for Borough of Manhattan, and Sherrod Drummond had uh, 20 from what I have here, and that were, uh, those both were big performances for both those gentlemen. Pete Zamolas had 10. And Randy Williams uh, did a good job offensively. I think he was a spark at one point for Queensboro. He had 11 points. The uh, Tigers are still winless in the CUNY, but uh, we'll see what they can do by year's end. 
I'm Joe Massey for Sean Couch. We thank you for joining us tonight for Queensboro basketball as the borough of Manhattan moves on and they are a legitimate uh, CUNY uh, title is uh, in looking at them now for two games. Yeah, looking good at four and one, and uh, I tell you, I like to see that Brooklyn matchup. You know, Brooklyn's going to be a it's going to be a great matchup right there. Yes, it will. And we'll see you next time out right here on QPTV. Thanks for joining us.